You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. All set for your flight? Yep, I've got everything I need. Eye mask, neck pillow, T-Mobile, headphones. Wait, T-Mobile? You bet. Free in-flight Wi-Fi. 15% off all Hilton brands. I never go anywhere without T-Mobile. Same goes from a water bottle, chewing gum, nail clippers, okay, passport. Okay, I'm going to leave you to it. Find out how you can experience travel better at T-Mobile.com slash travel. Qualifying plan required. Wi-Fi were available on select U.S. airlines. Deposit and Hilton Honors membership required for 15% discount. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome to From Beneath the Hollywood Sign. If you love old movies, Hollywood history, or the golden age of filmmaking, you've come to the right place. This is the podcast that talks about amazing stories of Tinseltown from another era and fascinating conversations with writer-producer Steve Kubine and actress-writer Nan McNamara. So, Steve, did Ava Gardner and Howard Hughes have a good relationship? Well, they did until he dislocated her jaw. What? Well, don't worry. She hit him back with an ashtray. From Beneath the Hollywood Sign is the gin joint for you. Just a quick announcement before we get started. A quick thank you to everyone who has bought a t-shirt during our campaign. We'd like to thank our partners, Inked and Screen, for making this campaign possible all the way up until November 15th, where you can get a single-sided t-shirt for $15 or a double-sided t-shirt for $17, as well as $3 decals. So thank you to Inked and Screen for making that happen. If you'd like to order a shirt now, you can go to the merch page on our website at trivialitypodcast.com. Or you can go in the show notes of this episode, and we'll make sure that that link is available to you down there. Just a reminder, though, this campaign goes until the 15th, and then prices will revert back to normal. So if you'd like to get a t-shirt, now's the time. We really hope you enjoy this episode with Julia and Lauren of the Misinformation Podcast. It's a fun one. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. The cream of the crop! Hello and welcome to Triviality, the show where lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil and I'm joined in the studio as always by the full collective today, Ken, Matt, and Jeff. How's it going, guys? What up? Triviality late night. Yeah, I like being called the full collective. That's like our band name. Maybe. It's either a collective of, of artists or a collective of serial killers one way or another. I don't know. It well, could... most of us are certainly not artists, so... Well, that's everyone can be an artist in their own right. But thank you for joining me today. Um, we have uh, Matt back from the factory. Ken's back from his uh, time machine uh, mini golf game with Marie Curry's great great grand grandson. Oh, what? you haven't even you haven't even heard that yet, so you have no idea <laughs> Not at all. Well, Wait. it's okay. You were there. <laughs> well, he was he was there and then back and then back again. Yeah, that's right. how time travel works. Well. Yeah, so it's like the butterfly effects or something. I don't know. Um, but we're very, very uh, excited today because we have uh, some returning guests who many of you, uh, I had to tell them before we started, uh, reached out to us and told us how much you loved them. And we wanted to make sure they were back on again. And that's Julianne Lauren from the Misinformation Podcast. How's it going? Hello. Hey, guys. We, ha- we have a flamboyance of uh, trivia co-hostesses here yes. in Rochester. Yes. If you have a collective of artists. Yeah, so, so. we are a flamboyance. Yeah. Ooh, yes. I like that. Uh, a flamboyance of tri- and then in somewhere in Colorado there's like a gaggle of trivia hosts or something maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> something like that um, yeah. th- uh, but uh, before we get started and, and you guys are actually going to host the game today um, just wanted to uh, have a little note here uh, we had a listener uh, we had a listener submit a question um, I said the name wrong and I, just, I feel bad because I don't like getting anyone's Shame name wrong on you Neil I know tisk, I've, tisk. I've never done that once Peter <laughs> Nguyen I <laughs> <laughs> apologize again. Yeah, Peter, Peter's uh, experienced that before. Um, but I uh, just wanted to say thank you to Emily Selfie. Uh, we apologize that we said your name wrong uh, the first time. And uh, you actually sent us a really nice audio clip. And uh, hopefully with your permission, I'm just going to play it so that everyone else will get it right for the rest of your life. So we don't, uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, other people getting it wrong. So here it is. Emily Selfie. So thank you very much, Emily Selfie. Um, yeah, what you should do, please, Emily, is if uh, every time somebody says your name wrong, just ask them to please reference this episode, <laughs> and then they can download our episode. That would be that would be really great. It's the official record, so hopefully it helps you. It would definitely help us. So thank you. Um, on the on a quick note though, uh, I had to look it up because when you said you were a flamboyance, I I was pretty sure that was an animal group too, and it yes. is. Mm-hmm. It's a flamboyance of flamingos. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, we love flamingos. Still not wrong. Yeah. Love That's one of here. Lauren's favorite. Trivia topics. Well, hold on. All the different don't, ones. don't ruin their Animal upcoming groups. questions here because they're about to host a game for us. <laughs> they are about to host a game for us. Uh, yeah, and oh, it, is, yeah. it is not about Pink Flamingos, John Waters classic. But mm. you, um, you already ruined one of my questions coming up when you texted us uh, <laughs> Gritty, the new uh, Philadelphia Flyers <gasps> mascot. The, the orange grimace. It looks like a drunken Muppet. <laughs> Just give it three weeks. I still won't know it. 
uh, well, I, I love my, I told the, the guys here that my favorite uh, take of it was someone on Twitter and the, all they said was, man, Gritty's seen some <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Well, Julian and Lauren, um, you guys are coming to us from Rochester, New York. You have an awesome podcast, but uh, this time, why don't you just tell a little bit, uh, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to and there's some uh, pretty exciting news in the future, uh, it sounds like. Yes, uh, both Julia and I happen to be on an ep- uh, two episodes of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, a little game Ooh. show that's been on the air for quite a while. I believe no, I've heard is of that. Regis. Wait. <laughs> uh, Regis is no longer uh, with us. Oh, no. Uh, on the R.I.P. game show. Oh. He's still oh. alive. We yeah. preemptively call people dead oh all the time. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's my problem. That's my fault, Who hosts but... it now? Terry Crews? <laughs> it's uh, Chris Harrison. Yeah. Oh. Oh, the, the Bachelor. Bachelor. Yes. And can oh. I tell you, so handsome. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, suits. they care. I hear it's a prerequisite. No, 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 no. They need well, to know. We do. What I, I appreciate <laughs> handsome men. I'll, I will thank say you, that. Thank you. Thank you. And mm-hmm. also, not a stitch of work done on his face. Ooh. Oh, he is yes. aw natural, and he looks great. No well, filler, that, nothing. He looks really, really him. good. That's always exciting. You yeah. never know in Hollywood. You never know how much. I can work almost never had. say good for them. I'm just so envious of handsome men like that. <laughs> Yeah, it was a great experience. We were in the middle of the desert in Las Vegas for awful. like three days, and it was 120 degrees, but we we went on a game show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Sounds like our studio. It was wild. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's Pretty really cool. awesome. Congratulations on that. Thanks. Yeah, but in, in Vegas, it's a dry heat. Oh, that's our studio. Yeah, that's not the humidity over Yeah, anyone who's yeah. been in this studio before, they know how, how terrible and humid it is in it's, here. It's a smelly sauna. Well, um, I think today uh, me and Matt are going to team up again. Mm-hmm. Let's be uh, right. let's be gritty today. Mm. Gritty the drunken oh. Muppet. <laughs> yes. Gritty the okay. drunken gritty. Muppet. I'm going to write it down. Gritty, yeah. gritty the Muppet. <laughs> let's do a mascot showdown. So we can either be well, Benny like the that. Bull local or we could be Philly the Philly Fanatics. Because it's Philadelphia themed, I guess. We're not even in Philly, but we'll be the Philly <laughs> oh. Fanatics. No, fanatics. fanatics. <laughs> you want to be the Fanatics? Okay. Gritty and the uh, Fanatics. Uh, and before we start, I know some people who listen to the show know about you already, but uh, where can they find your podcast uh, first here? And then we'll remind them at the end of the show. Uh, misinformation is on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever it's called now. Um, Google Play, Stitcher, and any other podcast app using our RSS feed. Well, wonderful. Uh, Julian and Lauren uh, were, uh, had a very, very special gift they sent us. They actually uh, paid for our rules guy to record in their home our mm-hmm. rules, and then they, they emailed it to us and said, hey, he did a brand new take. Mm-hmm. Why don't you guys play it? And so here it is from Julian and Lauren. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. Ooh, I'm talking about all the way to the top, yeah. Man, it's so different, but almost the same. Yeah. The acoustics in that room, amazing. <laughs> you can barely tell <laughs> yeah, the difference. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, take it away. Awesome. All right, here we go with our first round. Question one. The Powerpuff Girls, three superheroes created by Professor Utonium, have powers including flight, super speed, super strength, and x-ray vision. Don't lose your confidence and tell us the name of the villainous chimpanzee who is the Powerpuff Girls' arch enemy. I'm good. You remember this one? Yeah. Oh, I knew Ken would know it. <laughs> I, I know the show, and I, I'm just so bad with names in general, uh, as the beginning told us. Uh, anything, Jeff? Yeah, I feel really bad about this one because um, I'm a fan of Genny Tartarovsky and his work. He did Dexter's Lab. Mm-hmm. Um, the monkey in that one was uh, M, though, I think. And okay. I, I think this one might be a similar one like uh, Umgatu or something like that, but I don't quite remember If you it. said Umgatu, that's pretty specific to come, come off your gut. Do you want to go with Umgatu? <laughs> yes. Something random like, I don't know, Umgatu. Okay, yeah, we're going to lock in with Umgatu. It could be totally it's wrong. very specific for being a wrong answer. Uh, I believe it's Mojo Jojo. It is Mojo Jojo. The answer is Mojo Jojo. Mojo Jojo. Now I need to look up what the monkey is in Dexter's lab. <laughs> uh, a, bit, a, a bit more information about Mojo Jojo. Um, he was the professor's reckless lab assistant named Jojo before Professor Utonium created the Powerpuff Girls. And he was in the same accident that created the girls, giving Jojo super intelligence. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great show. All right. Question two. Which famous German composer was charged with prowling and vagrancy in 1820 when he was picked up by the Baden police for peeping into windows in the moonlight? His rap sheet didn't specify if he was looking for a lease. Hmm. Hmm. German composer. I I have one here. 
I have one here, Jeff. I don't know if that's too simple though. Oh, I oh, geez. Okay. You good? Uh yes, we're we are okay. good. Okay. So um couple German composers. Uh mm-hmm. Wagner is too late for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Brahms might be German. Um but the thing that <laughs> is jogging my memory is uh Feralise is a class or a romantic oh, yeah, yeah, period yeah. song. I think that was Beethoven. That and he is German. Yeah. That is the name of uh the I mean the song that everyone knows. All right, let's go so. with Beethoven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, luckily, um, we had the question read again because we didn't hear the clue until the second time, but uh, we went with our, our old friend Ludwig von Beethoven. You are both correct. It is Beethoven. Uh, mm-hmm. Extra points for Gritty for pronouncing it the correct <laughs> German way of Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Beethoven was promptly arrested by a policeman who mistook him for a tramp and threw him in jail, mm. even when Beethoven insisted that he was one of the finest composers of his generation. And yes, they were like, I've seen tell it to the judge. Yeah. <laughs> can't, you, can't you be both a great composer and also a tramp? <laughs> I, hey, Charlie, yeah, Chap- Charlie Chaplin was. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin was a, a tramp and a very good composer. Mm-hmm. Yes. Of films. Mm-hmm. He was. <laughs> Question three. Within $100, in 1976, Apple co founder Ronald Wayne sold back his 10% stake in the company to Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak for how much money? Oh, I that's just heard this. But sad. Oh, you call it. He did not want to be a millionaire, it apparently. Lower than that even, <laughs> okay. but. Um, we're locked in. Um, I just I had a number stuck in my head immediately at six hundred dollars, so we locked in with six hundred dollars. I wrote five dollars. Jeff wrote five hundred, and we uh, we ended up going five hundred. Okay. Well, it was supposed to be within a hundred dollars, so neither of you actually got it. Mm. It was eight hundred dollars. Oh. oh wow! So close. So um, Ronald Wayne actually drew the first Apple logo. Um, He wrote their original partnership agreement and he wrote the Apple One manual. Mm. So a year after leaving Apple, Wayne received $1,500 for his agreement to forfeit any claims against the new company. And as of August 2018, if Wayne had Uh, kept his 10% stake in Apple, it would have been worth over $100 billion, (laughs) (laughs) making him the second richest man on earth. Oh, 100. Uh, Speaking of which, Jeff, um, are you interested in selling your triviality stake for (laughs) 10 bucks? Yeah, that's fine. Our company (laughs) evaluation is actually over that. So I'm getting a good deal. It is is not negative anymore. That's good. (laughs) All right. Question four. The Pixar film Ratatouille centers on an ambitious young French rat named Remy who basically violates every health code in order to fulfill his dream of becoming a chef. What is the name of the human character that Remy manipulates like a marionette into cooking brilliantly, though he may not have tried his hand at pasta? Um, I'm going to be limited help here. Do you here. know? No, I've actually never seen Ratatouille. So you, Ratatouille so you is you the have, only Pixar movie I've never you seen. You have no, nothing to Absolutely offer. Absolutely nothing. Okay. We're locked in. I could, yeah. Okay. So um, can you think of pasta brands, like names of pasta brands? Not. It's French, though. I mean, his name was probably like Louis or... John or something. I'm Pat Oswalt played the <laughs> played Ratatouille. Um, do you want to go with with Louis? I don't. I don't know why. I just. I can't remember the movie. Sure. Okay. We're gonna lock in with Louis, unfortunately. Yeah, I remember he had a weird name, and you said something about pasta. Uh, maybe his name is uh, Linguini. I was actually thinking Linguini too. All right. The answer is Alfredo Linguini. All right. So gritty oh. got it. <laughs> oh. That's how we play. We play gritty. You yeah. know. <laughs> with your eyes, we're grinders. With yeah. your eyes bulged out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the wacky eyes. I like right, how, how gritty has Google eyes, but he also has like a Google torso. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like his mask has really grown on you. It's horrific. Out of his ears. It's oh. horrific. It's so bad. She said smoke comes out of his ears. Is that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> like that's a, like that's a fun feature yeah, about for the this kids. mascot. That's a terrifying, nightmare-inducing feature. I don't think they thought that through. Hey, kids, you got a quarter? (laughs) (laughs) This is awful. All right. Question five. Well, speaking of food, in 2014, a fellow named Zach Brown went viral when he created a Kickstarter page with an initial goal of $10 to make a batch of what popular picnic side dish. He definitely would have been able to afford a top-of-the-line refrigerator after this stunt. Okay. So I remember this. So do I. But not well enough. 
Um, so let's. I, I'm usually up on the memes, as the kids say. I am not. It's just a guess, though. So no, if you I know it, it, go for it. I, I asked what is a Facebook about 20 minutes ago. So. <laughs> no, that's right. Um, all right, we're we're locked in. I just wrote an answer that I thought sounded funny, and Matt says that's right. So. Yeah, it's it was something where he he asked for like 30 bucks, and then he said if he got it higher and higher, he kept making more elaborate versions of it. And I believe it was potato salad. Oh, Jeff, on the ball. Uh, we we said potato salad as well. The yes. answer is potato salad. Mm-hmm. Um, so his Kickstarter post went viral, and he ultimately received um, f- about fifty-five thousand dollars <laughs> from six thousand nine hundred people. Oh my um, god! And his description was, "quote Basically, I'm just making potato salad. I haven't decided what kind." God, yet. we need to start a Kickstarter. Yeah, I'll give him a buck. <laughs> How crazy is it, uh, everything that goes viral like this? You yeah. know, I mean, like. But here's the thing: I'd be willing to give a dollar to anybody who made me laugh. <laughs> 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 that's true so yeah yeah that's i fair. should i should start one that's that's you know good at making people laugh and then maybe we'll get a get a billion mm-hmm. uh well after five hundred, hundred billion after five unfortunately the uh the fanatics over here only have 20 points what do you guys have we have 40 40 okay well it's a tight game but we're not playing too well today <laughs> we're uh crashing the net playing a gritty yeah. uh you know well, you guys have been off sides a couple times you gotta be Another careful you might get terms. called for uh you know, interfering with the goalie. Oh, ah, so. more of that. Wow, you guys, your We're your sporting. hockey analogies are flawless. Yeah. Can I just say? I don't, a, know, I don't know what they're saying. I'm just playing a, a good, clean north-south game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'm just so proud. Yeah. Question six. In London's St. Pancras Churchyard is an ash tree surrounded by hundreds of overlapping weathered gravestones, relocated there when Britain's railroad expansion forced the exhumation of hundreds of remains in the 1860s. One of the workers tasked with this project was which English author, who fittingly went on to write Far From the Matting Crowd and is now the namesake of this robust tree? Books are my arch nemesis. (laughs) <laughs> i don't think it's I'd not a very about dangerous that. life I would, then yeah i yeah. wouldn't brag about I that can, uh, he's terribly afraid of paper cuts yeah <laughs> i can write something if you mm. want yeah do you have any ideas jeff on this on this author no i'm not familiar unfortunately right, we'll, uh, uh, we'll lock in you're gonna lock in um if Matt I, has no clue right correct i Matt. know the uh the work i just i'm so bad at remembering authors um you have nothing no, unfortunately, I don't. I feel bad this game. Normally, we're, we're on it together, but not tonight. So what we're going to lock in with is uh, far. It's the book is autobiographical, and it's uh, from the Madden crowd, and it's going to be Richard Madden from mm. Game of Thrones. <laughs> uh, not John Madden. Rob above Stark. Uh, we just said Byron. We don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, the author is Thomas Hardy. Mm, Tom Hardy. And this mm. is called um, Hardy's Tree. It's mm. So his solution when he had to move all these gravestones was to place them in a circular mm. pattern around an ash tree in the churchyard mm. in a spot that wouldn't be disturbed by the railway. So it's really striking when you go and visit. It's like one of the attractions mm. when you go to that cemetery if you're mm. a person that likes to visit cemeteries. Yeah. Are you cemetery people? Hell yeah. I, I tend to, to be, one. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because I, Ooh. well, because I'm an archivist. And so it's like a cemetery yeah. is kind of another place for memory. And yeah. it's, you know, nice to see people be, be memorialized that way. So yeah. I'm just a big old creep. So <laughs> I was listening, but I was also doing some Tom Hardy grunts. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ken and I always make the joke that every Tom Hardy performance, you, you're going to get a lot of just, hmm. <laughs> Well, it's hmm. funny if you're asking a fine if, actor, if they liked cemeteries, because we went to two separate cemetery sites in, in Boston and then in Salem. So True. <laughs> oh, we did. You're yeah. right. Yeah, and I came yeah. out of one. So we're hanging out, of, hanging around some uh, graves. Yeah. The Crypt Keeper never showed up. Nope. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Question seven. He truly had the worst seat in the house. Who was sitting in the Lincoln's box at Ford's Theater with the president, first lady, and his fiance, Clara Harris, on the night of April 14th, 1865? I just... Uh, These are such great questions because this is all things that I've read and I just had, did not store away. <laughs> oh. I just saw this. <laughs> this, is, this is the era where I let Ken usually take charge. No books, no Civil War history. Uh, no, just memes and sports. This is post Civil War. <laughs> well, oh, like oh, maybe the days. thing, maybe the thing I heard was about the doctor who attended to mm. Lincoln. Lincoln, doctor. That's uh, what I think I heard about McDreamy. Mm. Doctor Feelgood. Doctor Acula. 
Oh, these are all good doctors. Uh, we're, we're just going to lock in. Uh, Jeff's just kind of staring at me, so we're just going to lock in. All right. Let's go with uh, Barry Todd. <laughs> Barry Todd. <laughs> okay. Mary's twin brother. Mary. Right. Barry. Yeah. Uh, Lost to history. I feel like they have yeah. some weird relation to Booth or Lincoln, but I, I cannot pull who it is. I'm sure they do. I, I think they, they might. I, I remember reading this article and I, it's, I'm, it's, I'm just mad. Anyway, we just put Frederick Douglass, which is incorrect. <laughs> okay. The answer is Major Henry Rathbone. Mm, Rathbone. Mm. Rathbone. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those names that you'll just have to commit that to your mm. trivia bank. So for, um, I'll never forget so, it. <laughs> Till the next time. Because of uh, Shanghai Knights, the villain is Rathbone, played by uh, Littlefinger from Game of Thrones. Well, I'm not going to forget oh, it because of Jackson Rathbone from the Twilight series. There you go. That's how I'm yeah, going to remember exactly. it. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, and so was I. His <laughs> great, 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 great grandfather. Yep. <laughs> Takes um, all kinds. <laughs> So, when, yeah, when John Wilkes Booth entered um, the president's box, Rathbone attempted to apprehend him after he saw Booth shoot the president. Um, but Booth slashed Rathbone's arm with a dagger from mm. his elbow all the way to his shoulder. Oh, my God. And um, so Rathbone, like, for the rest of his life had to deal with this, like, what if he had been able to stop the president mm. from getting assassinated? And what if he had gotten uh. Booth, you know, right then? So his mental health really went went downhill it Sounds was a really, it's a really bad story yeah, but uh question eight it's an analogy okay so a non-functioning laser pointer is to ebay as fluid concepts and creative analogies computer models of the fundamental mechanisms of thought is to what this is the hardest analogy i've ever heard in my whole <laughs> life you have nothing on this no i'm just wishing that somebody would simulate me smarter <laughs> All right. Um, we'll we'll lock in. Okay. So we're looking for obviously the second part's a website. Seems like a website. Yeah. Um, Google. Uh, yeah. I mean, I said I said 4chan just because that's where there's a lot of stupid nonsense, and <laughs> that's that would be my equivalent of a uh, a laser pointer. I don't know. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't. We can do Google because it's a big idea okay just lock in with google that's whatever matt was talking about for you yeah mm -hmm. yeah well, i don't know I, I we put craigslist okay the first item sold on ebay mm -hmm. was a non-functioning laser pointer oh yeah and the first item sold on amazon was a book called fluid mm -hmm. concepts and creative analogies mm -hmm. that Computer makes sense. models of the fundamental mechanisms of thought gotcha. really long title unfortunate but mm -hmm. well at least we got that it was a website Yes. Yeah. That was very yeah, good. I thought you guys sense. were gonna get it. I thought I thought Gritty had the <laughs> had the lead on that one. Yeah. But it's all right. It's okay. Yeah, we, fell we got off. two more rounds. Yeah. They got dehydrated and they couldn't finish the marathon. They sent to the penalty box. <laughs> Hockey. <laughs> all right. Question nine. In two thousand, a group of Canadians took umbrage with their government's bailout of several professional athletic organizations. The Canadian Taxpayers Federation urged Canadians to express their anger, not by dropping their gloves, but by mailing what to then Prime Minister Jean Chrétien? Mm. All right, we're locked in. Uh, so initially I wrote down squid, because I know they do that in hockey, but just said... Detroit. Yeah. Detroit, okay. Yeah. That, oh, that would be so gross to mail. There's like a... <laughs> well, they're, ang they're angry, though. I, I guess. Know. We wrote down a puck, uh, a maple syrup I wrote down, and then... <laughs> Um, <laughs> one maple syrup. And then, well, like, I, if you were like a really upset <laughs> Canadian, what would you do, eh? Uh, I would write a letter that said "sorry" to make them even more sorry than I was. <laughs> That's good. That's, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're nice. Why, uh, they're probably not going to send anything like terrible, right? Because they're too nice. So, um, I, I'm gonna, let's either go a uh, strongly worded letter or <laughs> a puck. <laughs> Whatever you want. All right, we're going to go strongly worded letter. Yeah. I've got no bearing. Um, so my my initial thought was something like a, a red card or yellow card because it'd be like foul kind of thing, but that that's sense. more soccer, um, mm -hmm. and obviously not the national sport of uh, Canada, which is Curling? hockey. So we we ended up just going with a puck. The oh. answer is hockey puck. All right, oh, yay! Man. Gritty oh. taking Gritty. it home. Thanks for thanks for uh, making this a two way road here, Jeff. <laughs> Saying <laughs> what you guys go with. Str strongly worded letter. <laughs> and I said, between that and puck, no, go whatever you want. Could have pushed me into the puck area. Yeah. Push you into the crease. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. 
Question 10. It's almost time to lay back and relax. Which state capital is the only one with an autochthonous name? That is, its indigenous name, rather than the one given by colonists or migrants. I think we're in. Has the beast awoken? Oh, man. All you had to do was just say, go puck. That seems like a more legit answer. <laughs> okay, you're locked in? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so Jeff first wrote down Tallahassee. Oh. I like Honolulu. That's a good one. That's indigenous. Honolulu means... Uh... Like Bay or something like that? I can't it's, remember. Uh, yeah, I, we wrote a trivia question about a long time ago. Um, ooh, that's, I'd that's, be inclined to think that that might be the right one. Um, Juneau, Alaska, potentially. Okay, Diablo Cody. Um, so Tallahassee <laughs> and Honolulu. Um, different spelling. Different spelling. Do you have a, a, do you have a pinpoint to either? How, I'm just going to go, you figure it out like you did to me. You pick one. <laughs> that's fine. I'll, I'll go with my gut. I'll stick with Tallahassee. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe the capital of Wyoming is Cheyenne, and that's what we're locking in with, Wyoming. All right. Unfortunately, the answer is Honolulu, mm. Hawaii. Ah, see how that feels? <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. We're on the same team. <laughs> so the, the Dole Fruit Company didn't see it fit to change oh. it? or. <laughs> so Honolulu was founded by the indigenous people of Hawaii as long as 2,000 years ago, and it translates to sheltered harbor That's or sheltered is. bay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Honolulu, the most remote city of its size in the world, and is also the westernmost major U.S. city. Mm-hmm. Mm. There you go. Have you guys ever been to Hawaii? We have not. I have not. We no. haven't. I haven't either. It'd be fun to go. Anyone else? <laughs> That's a nice story. Yeah, let's yeah. go. We should go. You guys <laughs> want to go? Plenty of trip or what is this? Yeah, let's all go. <laughs> Jeff's yeah. been. I have. If you get enough. Jeff can't come. Yeah, Patreon subscribers. You know what? I'm almost positive that there is a layover in Chicago O'Hare <laughs> on our way to Honolulu <laughs> from here. Oh, yeah. So we can meet you guys at the airport. All right. Yeah. New stretch goal. That new stretch Great. goal. Yeah. Great. Done. After the first round, uh, Team Fanatics has 20 points and Team Gritty has 50 points. So we're having a mutiny over here, but we'll, we'll deal with it during the swing around. Got the gritty fitty. Yeah. What do you guys have in store for us today? All right. So um, for our halftime swing round, um, last time we were on, we requested more romantic comedy questions. Yes. Uh, Absolutely. So this time we brought our own. Mm-hmm. Um, devoted fans of rom-coms know that there are only like a dozen different interesting and glamorous occupations given to these movie protagonists. For five points each, we'll name three actors and the rom-com in which they starred, and you name what occupation they all had in common. So, for example, if I said Kristen Bell in Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Catherine Zeta-Jones in America's Sweethearts, and Julia Roberts in Notting Hill, you would say... We're just a boy standing in front of you. (laughs) Oh, yeah. uh, Actress. Actress. Yes. Very good. (laughs) Want me to start? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Here we go. Number one, Michelle Moynihan in Maid of Honor, Kristen Bell in When in Rome, and Jennifer Aniston in The Breakup. Question number two, Rafe Fiennes in Made in Manhattan, Hugh Grant in Love Actually, and Kevin Klein in Dave. Okay. I know that one. Number three, Kate Hudson in How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, Jennifer Garner in 13 Going on 30, and Justin Timberlake in Friends with Benefits. <laughs> so I think I might know that one too. Yeah. The, the, I've seen 13 going on 30 a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't seen a single one of these uh, films. Good movie. <laughs> Number four, Audrey Hepburn in Funny Face, Hugh Grant in Notting Hill, and Meg Ryan in You've Got Mail. The clowns, right? I take it back. I have seen one mm. of these films. Question number five. Whitney Houston in Waiting to Exhale, Catherine Heigl in Knocked Up, and Rachel McAdams in Morning Glory. Ah. Number six. Mark Ruffalo in Just Like Heaven, Matthew Perry in Fools Rush In, and Tom Hanks in Sleepless in Seattle. Number seven. Kate Hudson in Bride Wars, Christina Applegate in The Sweetest Thing, and Sandra Bullock in Two Weeks Notice. Neil's going to kill us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Number eight, Audrey Tao Tao in Amelie, Jennifer Aniston in Along Came Polly, and Virginia Madsen in Sideways. Okay, I'm one. very proud to say that uh, Amelie is one I've seen because that <laughs> film is brilliant yeah. and gorgeous. It's, beautiful. it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Number nine, Meg Ryan in French Kiss, Anne Hathaway in Bride Wars, and Diane Lane in Must Love Dogs. 
Mm. Bride Wars, second appearance. Mm. <laughs> and then number 10, be specific. Kate Winslet in The Holiday, <laughs> Jennifer Aniston in Rumor Has It, and James Marsden in 27 Dresses. Just talked about 27 Dresses, because right. I am James Marsden from 27 Dresses. Are you? All right, get the f*** out of here. Are you? Disgusting. <laughs> I am. Right. mad, I'll try to figure this out. All the answers are locked in uh, from one of my favorite rounds of all time. Thank you, Julian <laughs> Lauren. We did put wedding planner for like five of these, I'm pretty sure, right? There's at least three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. Swing round. Question number one. Michelle Monaghan in Maid of Honor, Kristen Bell in When in Rome, and Jennifer Aniston in The Breakup. Uh, so Team Fanatics, we went uh, art dealer. Mm. We said general marketing. General marketing. Okay, the answer was art gallery owner wow. slash curator. So we're going to give that to the Fanatics. Oh, thank you. Yeah, anytime. I mean... That's, a lot of good art good galleries are, are good art dealers, I would hope. Yeah. I forgot about that uh, movie trope, the art, art <laughs> yeah. gallery. Well, when Neil was like, I feel like they're, she's an art dealer. And I was like, well, it's not on the list somewhere. So <laughs> I feel like it needs to be on this list. The only list. reason I wrote that is she goes to the, I, think, I believe it's the Guggenheim at the end. There's a chase scene with Josh Dumal and there's, oh, the big there's chase art. Scene, yeah. yeah. And that, cause she throws a coin. <laughs> yeah, there's art there. She throws a coin in Rome in the fountain wanting to, to be with Josh Dumal and then That's her life when, goes when crazy. She, is that when she's in Rome? Is that how that works? She is in Rome. Okay. Yeah. And her husband is in the movie. Her also uh, husband. art dealer in, um, Nocturnal Animals. Not a romantic comedy, though. No. Yes. <laughs> yeah, don't go into no, that one thinking not. it's romantic comedy, yeah. Um, I will admit that I actually haven't seen most of these movies. This is a Julia round. <laughs> this is a Julia round only. So Julia and myself are, are very much on the same wavelength. Though. Kindred yes. spirits. Yes. Kindred spirits. All right, here we go. Number two. Rafe Fiennes in Made in Manhattan. Hugh Grant in Love Actually. And Kevin Klein in Dave. Uh, okay. Uh, so Hugh Grant, uh, one of my favorite performances in Love Actually, he uh, becomes the prime minister. So just to be blanket, we went politician. Mm, very good. Oh, we put prime minister. Ooh, are we going to give it to him? Hmm. I mean, like Dave wasn't a prime minister. That's true. He was a president. Hmm. Which is a you kind of prime we'll minister. We'll give it to you. Yeah, we'll hey, give it to you. Right. We'll give it to you. We knew one of them. <laughs> Yeah, it's the all... answer is politicians, we said. Okay. But was Ray Fiennes a prime minister? No. He uh, was like a senator or something in mm, made, yeah. in, made in Manhattan. He was a Nazi but... officer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, that's Schindler's List. My bad. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're mistaking J Lo's performance and Schindler's List for oh, her performance oh, in Made in Man Manhattan. <laughs> also it's not a common a romantic comedy. mix up. Yeah. They're so similar. Okay, question three Kate Hudson in How to Lo Lose a Guy in 10 Days, Jennifer Garner in 13 Going on 30, and Justin Timberlake in Friends with Benefits. Uh, so Justin Timberlake uh, is headhunted by, um, uh, oh my God, I just had a really bad brain oh my fart. God. Sorry, <laughs> Mila Kunis uh, to work at uh, at GQ, uh, and uh, I didn't know how specific he wanted, so I put that they work at a magazine. Uh, I, we could say that they were journalists, but I said mm -hmm. they put they work at a magazine. So. Yeah, and we okay. put magazine editor, general magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Point, points for you both. Points right. for both. Also, Neil, can I tell you, I am so proud. My heart has grown three sizes today with your knowledge of romantic comedies. We knew this it makes was me. Happen. Yeah. Some people might know on the podcast. I my guilty pleasure, not even guilty, not guilty pleasure. Guilty. I'm not guilty <laughs> about on. it. I love romantic comedies, and if I could watch them every day, I would. I like how he walked into the other room. He's like, Colleen, this is the best swing round ever. He's like, I can't believe you make me watch these movies. And then we both laughed. Because <laughs> she doesn't. That's sweet. Oh, it's bringing people together. Uh, question number four: Audrey Hepburn in Funny Face, Hugh Grant in Notting Hill, and Meg Ryan in You've Got Mail. Uh, Ken inspired this answer for wearing a red carnation on his lapel, so he said bookstore owner. Hmm. See, and I, I thought they were authors. It no. is bookstore no. owner. Yes, and we will not take authors. Unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, Meg Ryan wrote emails. That's a kind of author. <laughs> I mean, sure. But that won't get you points. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Number five, Whitney Houston in Waiting to Exhale. Catherine Heigl in Knocked Up. And Rachel McAdams in Morning Glory. Uh, we didn't know how spe uh, excuse me, specific you wanted us to be. Um, Rachel McAdams, uh, I believe, does go to become an anchor at one point. She's like a TV producer. Uh, so we just put TV producer slash anchor. Mm -hmm. And we okay. just went with TV anchor. Okay. We'll give it to you. We'll give it to you. Television. We have, yeah. we have TV producer. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, number six, uh, Mark Ruffalo in Just Like Heaven, 
Matthew Perry in Fool's Rush In, and Tom Hanks in Sleepless in Seattle. Uh, Mark Ruffalo came into the studio as a ghost, uh, still in love with us, and he said, uh, I just wish I could have still been an architect. Oh, architect. We have seen that have movie. architect, though. Here. <laughs> Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm d- I gotta figure out when I saw this movie. <laughs> Why did I see this movie? Because <laughs> you're a huge Reese, uh, Reese Witherspoon fan. Yeah. No, it's it just is. Legally Blonde. Sorry. No, Sweet Home Alabama. Was it on in a waiting room? <laughs> anyway, we put Radio DJ to be incorrect. <laughs> The answer is architect. And can I tell you, pretty much every movie I looked at where like a man had a job, yep, he was an architect. Yeah. There were so many to choose from. It's the sexiest of jobs. Mm-hmm. It kind of is. How many you're... architects do you know in Besides real life? Longshoremen, though? am I right? Hey, that's yo. true. You know, the only yeah, that's true. You're not wrong. The only architect <laughs> that I know in life though is woman. She's very good at it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know any men that are architects, although I feel like that's what guys always say they want to be. Like they're no, just saying, they don't. Guys that's in what movies they tell always want to pretend to be. One. Yeah, they always true. want to be pretend to be architects. But Speaking they can't do of physics. architects, let me let me uh, toss it over to my favorite romantic comedy, possibly uh, Five Hundred Days of Summer. Right? Mm. Oh. Architect mm, in yeah. that one. Yeah, he's also a douchebag. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he's the villain. Well, he's the villain. Yeah, yeah. Five Hundred Days things. of Summer is th- like an um, a gateway romantic comedy for a lot of dudes, a lot of college dudes. Mm. I've oh. noticed. That's a good way to yeah. When they're yeah. in their room, sad, like eating yeah. pizza alone. Man, I yep, thought I was exactly. I thought I was going deep, but all right. Then Adventureland, probably. Yes, I just dabble. You dabble. That's all right. He's a social romantic yeah. comedy only. <laughs> uh, number seven: Kate Hudson in Bride Wars, Christina Applegate in The Sweetest Thing, and Sandra Bullock in Two Weeks Notice. Uh, quid pro quo, uh, Jeff. Quid pro quo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's I have your a, title for this episode. I have a uh, I have a cut on the inside of my mouth. Full disclosure, and I'm having a lot of trouble speaking correctly. But anyway, Jeff, uh, what did we write? Uh, I, I'm just a simple country lawyer. Okay, uh, we figured there had to be a wedding planner somewhere on here, so we said <laughs> wedding planner. The answer is a lawyer. Oh. I say, I say, that's I say. as wrong as possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, Audrey Tatao in Amelie, Jennifer Aniston in Along Came Polly, and Virginia Madsen in Sideways. This is the only one I could not remember for the life of me, and I'm very disappointed. Um, I wasn't sure if it was like pet store owner or something, but we actually just went with writer. Mm. This is the only one that Ken was really sure on. Yeah. It says a waitress. Amelie is like one of my favorite movies, probably top five. It's great. It's lovely. It was wonderful. Yes. The answer is waitress. Mm. Nice job. I thought it would be too on the nose if I put Carrie Russell in Waitress. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, true. Although that is a lovely movie. I like great. that one too. So good. Nathan Fillion? Never mm. handsomer. Yeah, he's mm. great in that great movie. Doctor. He oh, is. Good doctor. Firefly. He mm. misbehaves. Firefly. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, mm, yep. no, Firefly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> bad stuff. Oh, no, I don't disagree. He might have been more handsome, but I, I like the ruggedness uh, plus the handsome oh, okay. rugged Firefly. Handsome. You don't want Jeremy yeah. Sisto in that movie. No. <laughs> 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 Number nine, Meg Ryan in French Kiss, Anne Hathaway in Bride Wars, and Diane Lane in Must Love Dogs. Uh, so Anne Hathaway, when she's coming down the aisle, uh, Kate Hudson put a video, an embarrassing video when they're going to get married. And so she had to break up with Chris Pratt, mm. spoiler alert. Uh, but she's a teacher in her normal day-to-day uh, life. No, we put kissing booth operator, right? <laughs> no, no, we didn't. No, what did we put? Uh, show me wedding planner. <laughs> the answer is teacher. <laughs> and then finally this was the one we needed you to be specific um kate winslet in the holiday jennifer aniston in rumor has it and james marsden in 27 dresses uh so for this one um the whole movie is about uh katzen heigl and she has all she's always a bridesmaid never a bride and she has 27 dresses and james marsden writes wedding announcements and wants to become a better journalist and so he writes about Catherine Heigl and kind of breaks them up and then they get back together mm. but anyway hates weddings and he writes wedding announcements mm. we thought he helped her find the 27 dresses and was a personal shopper <laughs> <laughs> uh, y- you are correct the answer is well, wedding, <laughs> wedding writer oh, no, wedding that's... columnist sorry not gritty uh, fanatic fanatic yeah Neil you are man Killed this round. Killed He's, it. He dead. wasn't lying. Good job. You Thank serious you. Serious about rom coms. Thank you. I have to carry this team now. When Jeff uh, pushed mm. me off of uh, puck, so yeah. I'll do it gladly. <laughs> and then we're gonna get back together. He, he ran. He ran me into letter. the yep. boards. Mm-hmm. He did. He ran me into the boards. Uh, yes. So after that amazing uh, swing <laughs> round, 
<laughs> Pat yourself on the back. Uh, I no, mean, fair enough. No, but. they're no, not because of me. It's the, the questions were amazing. That's why. Um, we have time? sixty-five of the fanatics, and uh, Team Gritty has seventy. So we close Hold the gap. On. Close the Hanging gap. On. Nice job. All right, here we go. Question number one. One of the longest words in the English language, the actual definition of this tongue twister is a political position that developed in 19th century Britain in opposition to liberal proposals for the removal of the Anglican Church's status as the state Church of England, Ireland, and Wales. So what's this 28-letter word? I'm locked in. Perfect. Me too, then. 28-letter word. I don't even know. Kerfuffle. <laughs> That's, That's probably like a little 12. short. <laughs> <laughs> Kerfuffle, kerfuffle. I'm sure this is one of those words that we've heard throughout history. Um, <laughs> Maybe I feel like I should know it better, though. I know. Uh, is there any any guess you want to put in? Because I, you know, we don't have to keep. We're not going to fi- figure it out. I don't think. But no, I suffer from hippopotamus escopedaliophobia. Well, so. I, we'll, <gasps> we'll we'll go with that. Whatever you <laughs> that's, said. That's the fear of long words. Because <laughs> <laughs> have you been practicing that at home? Is Sweet it, irony. Was, no, it's great. just one I know from like being a kid. <laughs> the pronunciation was exquisite. All right, Ken, what do you guys got? So you're going with hippopotamatra sesquipedalia phobia? Yeah. We're going to go with anti disestablishmentarianism. Oh, oh. <laughs> the answer, in fact, is anti disestablishmentarianism. Though I do believe hippopotamatra sesquipedalia phobia is a little longer. It but is. It does not mean that. Um, and there's, and there's, I think there's one longer than it that's a medical condition. There's too, quite right? a lot of them. Yeah. You're talking about yeah. uh, Volcan, uh, what is it? Uh, Volcan- volcanic ultramicroscopic volcanosilicosis <laughs> perhaps yeah black lung disease yeah so so anti-disestablishmentarianism is actually the longest english word that is not technical or medical neat um and is not is non-coined like mm. cool completely made up okay awesome. question number two the important Ooh. thing is i got points <laughs> <laughs> yes that is very important don't worry i got it dark on your scoreboard here okay number two who was the first pope of the 20th century? Here's a hint. His devotion was right there in his papal name. We're locked in. Okay. No, oh. your popes. Okay. Uh, Jeff wrote uh, what, Jeff? I wrote Pius. Pius. Uh, I'm, I'm inclined to believe him. Yep. We're going Pius as well. Great. Uh, he was specifically Pius the 10th. I'm going to give it to you. I'll give it to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he served from 1903 to 1914, and he was born... Here we go. Giuseppe Melchiore Sarto. Ooh, great oh, pronunciation. Sing it. Thank you. Just Thank you. You know, it. it's a beautiful you German sing name. It. That's what the Italian. Let it rip. And they got to do this. <laughs> you got to do the fingers, the fingers. Yeah. in a pinching. Yeah, I wish you guys. Antonio Margarete. <laughs> wish you could all see us doing it right now. <laughs> Dominic like, Ducoco. I like a spaghetti. Angelo Linguini. Joe right, Piscopo. Things that are getting cut. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Okay. <laughs> Question number three. Name that director. Often billed mononymously, this film director is known for his lush, exotic set designs and is best known for movies like The Cell, The Fall, and Mirror, Mirror. Isn't The Cell that terrible Jennifer Lopez movie? No, it is a Jennifer Lopez movie, but is yeah. it terrible? I Ladies? So. <laughs> You're like... um, I, I have not uh, seen it in its entirety. I find it to be um, interesting, if not well acted. Okay. It's well, like it's helps. a mixed bag. <laughs> well, what uh, Matt put fits the criteria, and I can't think of another director that mm. fits that criteria, so we're locked in. God, I know this name. Oh, I can't believe I'm... For, uh, it's like... Um, yeah, if we're probably wrong then. It's not Balky, no. Um, <laughs> Banksy? Perfect strangers. Balky or we shall do the dance. <laughs> you guys can check out my new podcast that's coming. Oh, out. God. I don't need to promote it here. Talking do, perfect do, stranger do things. Uh, <laughs> funny thing is, he's not joking. It's launching October 1st. <laughs> um, God, I know his name. It's, um, oh, I can't remember his name. It's killing me. I think it might start with an A, but I, I'm, I'm wrong. Um, we're just going to go with uh, um, Andre. So like we said, we didn't think this was necessarily right, but it's a director that goes by one name. He directed Charlie Angels full <laughs> throttle. Jesus. The first one, too. Yeah, A little bit of uh, the OC, if I believe. It's yeah. uh, Mick G. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, unfortunately, neither one of you got that hey. right. Uh, the director's name is Tarsum. Oh, yeah. Mm. Or Tarsum Singh, Singh is his real last name. Yeah. Uh, he is from India and was the director, also the director of R.E.M.'s Losing My Religion music mm. video. Uh, the Fall, the movie that he directed, uh, is one of my absolute favorite movies. It is so lush and so beautiful. Nice. And they uh, filmed it in like 17 different countries. Yeah. Just to clarify once again, we did not think it was Mick G. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of thought it was big. <laughs> okay, question number four. First conceptualized in the 19th century, this is a term for delusions or hallucinations shared by a couple, which is from the French for madness of two. Name that disorder. There is a movie with Jennifer Aniston and Clive Owen where <laughs> she does suffer from this, so <laughs> we'll go with that. You say Jennifer Aniston and Clive Owen. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's derailed. My bad. <laughs> I don't know what. I think of a different movie. Sliding doors. Uh, not sliding doors, but good reference. We're locked in, by the way. So okay. I'm thinking of things that start with by or mm-hmm. D. What is two? Or is that a do? Do. Duplicity. Sure. Locked in. <laughs> Jeff also said. Wait, that's what we wrote. We wrote duplicity. Wow. Wow. That's, uh, you guys all have the, you have, you have the, this madness. You have this madness. It's called falia du. Oh, Folly Got Oh, mm-hmm. that's a... Uh, that's a... Mm-hmm. Uh, the same syndrome follow follow shared by more than two yes. people, like you guys, might be called Folly A Trois, mm. Folly A Quatre, mm. that's what we got. Quatre, uh, Folly and Famille, Family Madness, or even Folly A... Oh, God. Plusieurs? Mm. Plusieurs? Mm. She's, she doesn't I'm speak a bad French very French. well. We, that's a pretty good <laughs> I'm accent. Italian only. Uh, good <laughs> um, thing we have a call-in guest, it, uh, Audrey Tateau. <laughs> Please correct their French. I don't know. Yeah. Yes, yeah. If she can call in, I would be happy to be corrected <laughs> on my French. Um, also, apparently, Faliadu is a uh, Fall Out Boy album, yeah. which our engineer oh, here God. pointed out to us. Man, yeah. we how did just, you not get we that? We were just talking. That about. is the last great Fall Out Boy album, oh, great in my is, opinion. Great is an uh, exaggeration. No, I said the last great. I loved it. Uh, our engineer says Save Rock and Roll is great, and he vehemently disagrees with you on <laughs> your idea that Faliadu is the last we'll have to, great album we'll have from to have it out. Fall Out Boy. Well, uh, <laughs> The engineer uh, can take my opinion in that there is no good Fall Out Boy album. (laughs) (laughs) I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. All Mm. right. Here we go. Question number five. Don't think too hard. What is the name of the mascot for the Minnesota Vikings? So um, right away your mind wants to go to Viking. Yeah. Right. It's not like Vinny Viking. not thinking too hard. Right. (laughs) Um, Is it Vinny Viking? What's the name of the thing they do when they they go like, (laughs) Shrumpf. Whatever, when they clap, what's I don't it called? Know. Clapping. <laughs> yes. They, the whole crowd does it when they're trying to pump themselves up. They go like Slap shrimp. Hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forget shrimp, what it is. very big in Minnesota, by the way. It, it's got to be a Viking, right? It's not like Thor. Or I think he's not a Viking. What's right? his name? Oh, man. Minnesota. But Vinny, I don't know. He's obviously a Viking. Well, who's a famous Viking? Eric? Yeah, that's oh. one of them. Or Leaf. Leaf Eric? Leaf? Leaf Erickson or Eric the Red. Those are both. Let's go Vikings. Leaf. I'm descended from Eric the Red, apparently. We'll go, we're going to, we'll go say Leif the Viking. Oh, I'm pretty sure he's named after Leif Erikson and he's Eric the Viking. Oh. Um, you're both wrong. I'm so uh. sorry. His name is Victor the Viking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I did put joking. Vic the Viking. Yeah. Uh, and apparently the thing that they clap, according to our engineer, is Skoll, S-K-O-L, uh, not shrimp, but you were very close. Um, <laughs> apparently, apparently the mascot used to be Ragnar, mm. who was a real live man who dressed like a Viking until t- 2015 when the guy who played him was asking for $15,000 a game to be Ragnar. Oh. And the Vikings were like, no thanks, we'll get a dummy in a yeah. big mascot suit. Yeah, they so already As a former mascot, Neil, yeah. uh, is fifteen grand per game uh, fair commish? Well, I'll just say this, and it's not really a a, um, a statement. I guess the whole show can do it, but if they were gonna, if he's gonna ask for fifteen grand, they should at least uh, pay the cheerleaders a living wage. That's what I would say. Thank just you, Neil. Good to me. Yeah, I was you just know gonna what? say. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Question number six. Almost every culture has its own style of dumpling. The Italians have ravioli, the Polish pierogies, and the Chinese have bao. What is the Japanese style of dumpling? <laughs> we're locked in. <laughs> uh, finally one? your love of japan yes. comes in handy <laughs> what'd you have for dinner tonight neil i had sushi <laughs> <laughs> oh um oh yeah we're in 
We are going with gyoza. Ah, we also said gyoza, also known as pot we, stickers over the pond I here. I thought you wrote Godzilla. No, I didn't. That's gyoza. <laughs> Godzilla, yes. Godzilla is a famous... Neil's handwriting is not great. So. Sack. Um, gyoza is the answer. We also accepted pot stickers. Um, they're delicious, and they're mm-hmm. usually steamed or fried and often filled with minced pork. Yep. So points for both. From Milan to board. Minsk. <laughs> minced. Minced. <laughs> Okay, question number seven. Within 10, how many moons does the planet Jupiter have? Mm. Uh, yeah. No, we're, we're locked in over here. As are we? Yeah. Oh, uh, right. we're locked in with 30. Um, okay. I, I think Saturn has somewhere in the 60s. I'm surprisingly like Jupiter has less because it's, even though it's a larger body, but it's got big moons. So they, they think a lot of them combined. So we said, I think 58. I, I think it's close. I'm so sorry. You're both incorrect. Oh. The answer is 79. Oh. There are 79 known moons of Jupiter. The Galilean moons are, say it with me, Jeff, Io, Europa, Enceladus, Anime, and Callisto. Ganymede. Oh, Callisto, that's right. Enceladus yeah, is uh, Saturn. Good job. You're just like right in with me. Question number eight. Soon to air its 37th season, this wildly popular U.S. television show has had a different subtitle for every season. Can you name this program that has graced our screens with such gems as Heroes vs. Villains, and heroes versus healers versus hustlers. I think we're locked in. We're locked in. No. Okay, great. So it season. started sometime like 1981. What would <laughs> Thundercat? <laughs> Am I? That's a. Oh no, God. That's right. Yeah, that's I, right. I'm in my 30s. You're now. huge. Get over He's it. right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I wasn't. I wasn't questioning the math. Triviality just, late now. Falling just, apart over there. <laughs> felt old. Thundercats. <laughs> <laughs> It's secretly still been on Thunder the Cats are no. 81. Uh, it's, oh, it's wildly popular. Wildly popular. Mm. By the yeah. way, I remember the name of the monkey in Dexter's lab. It's Monkey. Thank <laughs> 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 uh, Let's say Thundercats. Thundercats, ho. Uh, I was trying to think of it, and I, I completely forgot this show had this many seasons and still does, and Jeff uh, wrote it down. I'm pretty sure we're right, but yeah, I'll I let think Jeff it's take it. Survivor. It is Survivor. It is Survivor. It makes so much sense. But they do like five a year, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they do. Um, their 37th season is about to air, and it is called Survivor colon David versus Goliath. Okay, question number nine. Here we go. The incomparable and heavenly Bette Midler has spent over 40 years in the entertainment biz with 14 studio albums and two Tony Awards, one of which she just won this year for her turn as the titular Dolly in Hello, Dolly. What is Ms. Midler's nickname, which was also the title of her debut album? Uh, Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus. Oh, well, there you go. Let's say her first album was Hocus Pocus, and that was her nickname. Too. Fair enough. Uh, we're we're just gonna say um, we're just gonna say Bet. Disappointing, uh, right? It's all right. I'm. I'll get over it. Uh, the answer is the Divine Miss M. Mm. She started out singing in gay bathhouses in New York City, and the rest is history. She's also amazing on Twitter. Yeah, she is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's very funny. Question number ten. <laughs> While he's written what seems like thousands of books in varying degrees of quality, James Patterson's most famous character appears in 27 of them, along with a couple of movies. Who is this character? Finally. Got it. We're in. Is this Jack Ryan? No. no. That's Tom, Tom Clancy. Clancy. Yeah. Um, I think You're it's not Alex looking. Cross. You're not oh, looking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Morgan Freeman, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Kiss the Alex gr- Cross. Kiss the girls. Kiss the girls. Oh, uh, yeah, Alex Cross. Yeah. Yep, the answer is Alex Cross, uh, because Patterson loves to do plays on words for the titles. Okay. So cool. So, how are we doing on scores, boys? It's it's like it hasn't really moved that much, so it's uh, team... Uh, <laughs> what, yeah, but what's the score? It's uh, team Fanatics, uh, 105. <laughs> team uh, Getty, I don't know, Gritty? Sorry. <laughs> team, <laughs> team Gritty, uh, 110. Team Gritty Lee. Mm-hmm. Five point difference here. Very it's an, close. Yeah, yeah very, very, very close. close. All right. So for your final round, this is your wager in zero to 30 points on each category. Mm -hmm. Correct. Absolutely. All right. Here are your categories. Candy is dandy. Then food that can kill you. Then cry me a river. Justin Timberlake. Followed by (laughs) sissy that walk. And then know your rights. All right. Our wagers are locked in. Same. Beautiful. All right. Category one, candy is dandy. 
A Harvey Wallbanger is a delightfully named cocktail made with vodka, Galliano, and what refreshing mixer? Uh, food that can kill you. You might ask Agatha Christie. Droops such as apples, peaches, plums, and apricots all contain amygdalin, which produces what common poison in the human body? Category three, cry me a river. If you know this, you might do a little happy dance. Two African national capitals are separated by this second longest river in Africa, which is also the world's deepest river. And it's also the only major river to cross the equator twice. Name it. Okay, sissy that walk. John Waters' muse and official filthiest person alive, drag performer Harris Glenn Milstead was best known by what name? And then know your rights. Which constitutional amendment, part of the Bill of Rights, protects the right to a fair and speedy public trial by jury. This amendment also includes a pack of other liberties, including the rights to be notified of the accusations, to confront the accuser, to obtain witnesses, and to retain counsel. All of our answers are locked in. All right, first question. Candy is dandy. A Harvey Wallbanger is a delightfully named cocktail made with vodka, Galliano, and what refreshing mixer? Uh, we we kind of talked back and forth. We don't really know um different alcohols and how they're made how they're made drinks and stuff like that we thought that they actually the drink was orange colored but we couldn't we thought maybe that was the galliano we don't know what that is and we said refreshing we just thought sprite which is probably incorrect but we wrote sprite yeah i'm not 100 percent sure either but i thought it was lemonade okay the answer is orange juice mm, it was orange <laughs> Yeah, it was orange. Um, by the way, in CB radio slang, a Harvey Wallbanger is the lingo for a drunk driver, specifically mm. one who continually drifts across the road to one shoulder and back. Gotcha. Oh. Food that can kill you. You might ask Agatha Christie. Droops such as apples, peaches, plums, and apricots all contain amygdalin, which produces what common poison in the human body? Uh, we wagered uh, five on this one. Uh, we wagered 15 on the last one, uh, by the way. Uh, we just said cyanide. Yeah, uh, we wagered 30 on the last one. We wagered 30 on this one, and we said arsenic. The answer is cyanide. Mm. Apple seeds have the lowest amount, and apricots have the highest, and it has been used as a quote-unquote cancer cure since the 1950s. Spoiler hmm. alert, it does not cure cancer. <laughs> then fact, bananas contain kills. radiation, which is why no fruits and vegetables. <laughs> just to be safe. That's very smart question three cry me a river if you know this you might do a little happy dance two african national capitals are separated by this second longest river in africa which is also the world's deepest river and it's also the only major river to cross the equator twice name it uh so we wagered uh 20 on this one uh figuring cry me a river was either justin timberlake for neil or a river for me uh i got my river question uh that's the congo river mm-hmm I can't think of a happier dance than a little Congo. So we said Congo. It is the Oakland, Congo. Oakland five for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With measure depths in excess of 720 feet, that's like four Niagara Falls stacked on top of one another. All right, here we go. Sissy, that walk. John Waters Muse, an official filthiest person alive. Drag performer Harris Glenn Milstead was best known by what name? Uh, we wagered five. Uh, this was, uh, yeah, definitely his Oakland muse. Oakland five, please. Oakland five, thank you. Uh, he's definitely his muse, and this would be divine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we uh, we wagered five as well and had nothing, so. Yep. No. Uh, the answer is divine. He was made famous um, from the film Pink Flamingos, which you actually ironically mentioned earlier in this episode. <laughs> and the last one, know your rights. Which constitutional amendment, part of the Bill of Rights, protects the right to a fair and speedy public trial by jury? This amendment also includes a pack of other liberties, including the rights to be notified of the accusations, to confront the accuser, to obtain witnesses, and to retain counsel. So uh, we wagered another Oakland Five on this one. Um, Neil and I couldn't really remember it offhand, but I know for a fact that the the tenth um, amendment, the last one of the Bill of Rights, they just jammed a bunch of crap in there. So we figured maybe it was the tenth amendment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, we wagered the Oakland Five as well. Um, I got through five. I know the first five, and I didn't know the sixth. So I thought, hey, maybe it's the sixth. So we said the sixth amendment. <laughs> The answer is the Sixth Amendment. All right. Well done. It's a big 10-point swing. Yeah. Using my paralegal studies knowledge. 
Okay. So it looks like despite a gritty game, uh, we ended up with, what, 55 points? Yeah, 55. And you're at 115? That is correct. <sighs> you're the cream of the crop. Yeah, no, I'm living in a nightmare, and I am the cream. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Luckily, we, we bet uh, conservatively, and uh, Jeff and I uh, actually do listen to the show, so we knew a lot of those answers, yeah. except Harvey Wallbanger, because yeah. I don't drink. So That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, but no, thank you very much for... Just throwing uh, us under the wheel there. Mm-hmm. That's all right. <laughs> um, thank you for, for hosting this awesome game. Uh, you both are amazing, and your show is amazing. Uh, and then everyone uh, can find you at uh, Misinformation Podcasts anywhere that podcasts are heard. Anywhere good yeah. podcasts are heard. Yes. Um, and you can get us hit us up at our website, www.misinfopod.com. Misinfopod.com. Right mm-hmm. yep. uh, any any last words uh, for our listeners or any uh, fun anecdotes here? I'm getting married next month. Oh, oh congratulations. congratulations. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's He's awesome. a real man and everything. Oh, hey, how <laughs> about know. that? It's weird that you have to specify that. I know, isn't that strange? Well, we'll so. make sure to write the wedding announcement. There's uh, not any rom-coms about podcasters yet, so that occupation is still yet. available. No. Oh, That's God. good because it's very hot right now. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Well, let's yeah. just Get say, uh, as someone in the business, it's in development. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much to uh, Julian Lauren from the Misinformation Podcast for joining us today. Uh, please check out their show. Uh, it's one of our favorites. And uh, for everyone who emailed us about the show and how much they love it, uh, keep sending those emails. And then we're just going to start forwarding it to them uh, just cause, so oh, they can read it. That'd be great. Um, but, uh, yeah, we just wanted to say thank you very much for hosting that wonderful game. We'll have you back again, uh, for Ken, Matt, Jeff, Julia, and Lauren, and for the voodoo doll and my pill that makes them come on the show every time. My name is Neil, and that was Triviality. My f***ing helmet! Starting goalie, Marco Belcher. Call him Belchie. He's from Regina. Regina? He drinks a lot of hand sanitizer. What's so f- funny, giggly bits? <laughs> we have your mama right here. Oh, yes. Look at this beautiful smile. There she is. Say hello. Oh, Chernobyl. I'm on your team. Does anybody else see this? A woman. Your turn. I love you, mama. You might want to wash it before you put on, huh? Hi, I'm Doug Ladd. Two rules, man. Stay away from my Percocets. And do you have any Percocets, man? All right.